Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Barbara Bull. I will be speaking German, and I thank you for giving me an opportunity to speak in my mother tongue. Thank you very much for inviting me along. I'm not a politician. I am not a culture politician. I am a creator of culture, and I really sense that in my everyday activities um, as a film producer, I'm, I've come along to talk about fiction today, and I get a sense of how little I really think of Europe in my everyday life. Europe only becomes youth interesting or useful for me when I talk about uh, planning a co-production with someone from a neighboring country or when there is a possibility of getting some financial support for culture. Now, given the existential problems that have already been raised by colleagues before me, um, youth unemployment, economic problems, the elections that are coming up, given all of this, it would be tempting to just um, shirk away from that and say that I really can't help here, our culture can't help you here. But maybe that too would be a mistake. I don't want to pretend that... Um, Culture is a cure-all, but I do agree with Barossa when he says that uh, Europe's um, culture is a cement that binds it together. Uh, Doris Pack said quite rightly that we've come a long way uh, from um, shaping uh, what started off an, as an economic project into a cultural project. and. I do hope that you are following me. I, I do hope that you can hear and understand what I'm saying. Die europäische Kultur. So European culture. Certainly this is not something that can be understood as a single uh, unified culture. I can't imagine um, some kind of amalgam of all of our cultures and languages just being thrown together in a pot. No, I think our diversity, which is uh, based on shared values that have already been discussed today, this diversity is one of our treasures here in Europe. And this was said at the conference of 2006, um, A Soul for Europe. Doris Pack quite rightly said that Europe has already always had this soul, but it's a soul that is only known to those who uh, look to Europe from the outside, from outside its borders. And as has already been said, um, we live in an age of the moving picture. Culture, what is culture? It's uh, literature, music, rock and roll. But nowadays, the most powerful uh, medium is a moving picture film, cinema, on the small screen but also on the big screen. I am involved in the uh, public radio. I am working very hard on in the um, global public um, radio. It's become quite mar marginal in some countries, but it still is very important. So public broadcasters in some European countries still have a very important role that they play. And they are bound by law to be independent politically, to provide and disseminate information, and to give provide a platform for citizens to exchange their views and opinions. And what this means is that in Europe, we have um, cooperation. You may have heard of the cultural channel Arte, uh, Franco-German cooperation, where, which has been expanded to other um, countries which speak the same languages, so Austria and Switzerland. So that's a very positive example. But quite often when we think of Europe, we think of the funds 
cultural funds. Now, I'm going to try to be a bit briefer than I'd originally planned, just to help us um, catch up a little bit of time. So Burroughs has said that culture allows us to overcome borders, and I'm sure that he meant more than just the national borders when he said that. There can be other um, virtual borders, so the borders of what's possible, the borders of what's done, um, the borders of set ideas, the borders of what can can be said. And culture makes it possible for us to overcome these barriers. Fiction, in particular, can help us to do this. In recent times, we've seen many um, TV films and um, films for the cinema. I've uh, seen them come out of uh, public broadcasters. And I'd just like to give you an overview of some of the um, subject areas that have been discussed in cinema. For example, family um, dramas, the uh, uh, work that's been done on the story of Thomas Mann. I'm currently producing a um, project on Bertolt Brecht's life. And these are projects that have received EU funding. They've received so the support of Arte as well. And these are series that have been sold worldwide. They've been received awards, including the International Emmy Award. But we've produced other films that deal with very different subjects. For example, the question of suicide in family, depression. Depression is something that's uh, increasingly important across Europe. We look at uh, regional problems, structural changes, cultural changes. We deal with questions of in immigration, multicultural society, uh, dementia, um, dignified, um, uh, dying in dignity, and um, family dramas, family problems, um, the problems of someone not feeling um, able to fit into uh, today's society, uh, pressure to perform at work, uh, pressure at work, harassment in school, bullying, uh, harassment at work, losing your job all of a sudden and how that impacts on people's lives. Um, but also questions to do with our own history and coming to terms with that history. Uh, for example, looking at current issues as well, um, uh, the collapse of our neighbouring countries, econom economic problems. Um, we've tried to tackle problems to do with our crisis and how it's uh, affected our, the, our collective conscience. There's a film, for example, that um, looks at a possible scenario of um, the being um, scrapped and Germany once again using the Deutschmark. We've looked at a hypothetical scenario of what would happen if a ratings agency were to downgrade Germany. And we're looking at um, producing a series on the um, neo-Nazi movements, the underground movements and what would happen if these movements well these movements have been killing and um, murdering people since the 1990s germans were aghast when they found out that for so many years um, the victims themselves were being treated as uh, potential criminals and there was all kinds of suspicion of the victims themselves they were um, thought to be involved with the Mafia. There were some important questions that we needed to ask about the German constitutional framework and how it made it possible for um, the victims and the perpetrators to be mixed up in this way. So the um, right-wing extremists um, who were not being caught uh, whilst the victims themselves were under suspicion. We've also uh, got a, sev a program that looks at young people uh, at the time of the collapse of 
the of communism and how uh, these people were recruited by right-wing extremists, these people who had no other prospects. And these are some of the issues that we've been looking at. And when it comes to this rise of nationalism that we've heard a great deal about today, culture can play its part. In times of economic crisis, there's always a tendency to turn back on yourself. And um, these nationalist forces um, try to recruit young people for their cause. So what if there was a European dream? Well, I want to go a bit further than that. There's a lot being produced here in Europe, about 1,300 um, cinema films. And in the US, you've got about 800 films being produced in the same period of time. Still, despite this, Hollywood is really the benchmark. You, know, it, you have to have someone like Woody Allen come to Europe to make a film about Paris, Rome, Barcelona. And these um, American films are then um, screened across Europe in European cinemas. But that's rarer when it comes to European cinema. It's extremely rare that we get something from our neighboring, neighboring countries, public uh, broadcasters, being screened in our own countries. So I really, really wish for more cultural exchange. I think that we need to go to young people and uh, young people today are present on the internet. So my idea would be to have a European-wide internet platform so that all of the wonderful cinema that's being produced and that's being supported with subsidies and that's benefiting from new funding under Europe's Creative Europe program, quite often, just because this is a type of cultural good that's subsidized, you don't reach the audiences. I think we make far too much, too many films. We can't compete with American blockbusters because I don't think we can really absorb this number, this very high number of films. There's all of this culture being produced and it just gets forgotten and gathers dust in the archives. It's a great shame, I think, because there's all this work of actors and producers, all this public money that's gone to support these films. Um, it seems such a shame for this work to end up in the archives, gathering dust. I think we stand a better chance of reaching young people online. I think anyone who has really been struck by a film, a, a, a good, intelligent film, they will be struck by it because they can recognize similarities and differences. They can feel empathy for the for the people that are represented, but they can also empathize because they can see themselves mirrored. It's interesting, therefore, to see how other people live their lives and, and to have an opportunity to identify with other people. I was very happy to hear um, Mrs. Pack's anecdote about someone saying that he traveled abroad and found himself. I think the same thing can happen with cinema. I don't think we should continue to dream the American dream uh, because American cinema is so important for us. No, we should um, have our own uh, European dream and our, my dream is one of a European internet platform. Thank you.